You may have noticed in your life already that human beings love to categorize things. And when we are talking about the structures of living cells, there is no difference. So let's immediately categorize all cells as existing as one of two groups. And those groups uh, either well, those two groups are referred to as eukaryotes and prokaryotes and we've got them illustrated here now I'm guessing that when you look at those words it doesn't spring out in your mind immediately what they happen to mean so let's just kind of try and de decipher them a little bit a karyot is what we refer to or what we could name a nut a nut or perhaps we could call it a kernel as in the kernel of a nut exactly the same over here of course so therefore what do we mean by you and pro and how can that help us to understand these concepts well interestingly you as a prefix means true so a eukarya is what we might refer to as a true nut whereas pro means before so our prokaryotes are what we might refer to as before the nut so let's see if we can actually kind of try and decipher that a little bit well, first things first, let me introduce you to the subcategories of each group. When we are talking about eukaryotic cells, we are talking about plants and animals, fungi and protists. When we are talking about prokaryotic cells, we are talking about bacterial cells and archae, sometimes pronounced as archaea, in fact, that's the pronunciation I'm gonna use. And in order to introduce you to these things and perhaps to give you an, a sense of why these names are given, I, I actually want to provide you with a very simple definition of each one. So for eukaryotic cells, we are talking about a cell or cells that contain, they contain their genetic information their gen in fact, let me use the proper term, genetic material. They contain their genetic material enclosed, enclosed, enclosed in a nucleus, in a nucleus. Okay, so think about this enclosing here. That enclosing could well be where we get our true nut from. We have an enclosed nucleus. Whereas our bacterial cells and our archaea, we can define these as we can define these as having their genetic material, genetic material, and by that of course we mean their DNA, the genetic material, is not is not enclosed in a nucleus. Is not enclosed in a nucleus. So we immediately have a separation between these two concepts. We have an enclosed nut-like nucleus for our eukaryotic cells and our prokaryotic cells, our bacteria and archaea, do not have their genetic material enclosed in that way. Now, let's see if we can actually illustrate this, albeit very, very, very simply. Let me introduce you to two cell membranes. Let me just go back up slightly. Two cell membranes. On the left-hand side, don't forget we are talking here about eukaryotic cells. And over on the right-hand side, don't forget we are talking about prokaryotic cells, okay? So, we have a cellular membrane in both cases. If we go a stage further, we also have cytoplasm or cell fluid in both cases. So at the moment, our cell types look to be somewhat similar, despite them being slightly different shapes and quite, quite differently sized. But at this next stage, we find our distinction kicks in because now we incorporate our DNA or our genetic material and we notice clearly on our left hand side our genetic material our genetic material let me just uh, come on to here our genetic material our orange loops of DNA oh, sorry our orange strands of DNA they are surrounded in this membrane so it has what we call a membrane bound nucleus whereas when we look at our bacterial cell we have what we would describe as a DNA loop Okay, so here, this loop of DNA is not surrounded in a nuclear membrane. We also have additional rings of DNA, which we refer to as plasmids. So we have a separation, which of course allows us to categorize. Now, there's a couple of things I'd like to introduce in a bit more detail with regard to bacteria that we're not, that I'd, you know, I'd like to incorporate here. The first one is that our bacterial cell, our prokaryotic cell, 
also has what we refer to as a cell wall. And that cell wall really, that cell wall really encloses the uh, bacteria and separates it from its external environment. So it really separates it into its units. Just bear in mind when we talk about cell walls, we're also going to talk about cell walls in plants and fungi, but we're talking about a very different concept, a very different type of cell walls. So don't get confused about that. Secondly, we also find with our bacterial cells that very frequently they have what we refer to as flagella. Flagella tail like structures. By the way, one of these would be called a flagellum, more of which in future tutorials. These flagella here um, and we can we, we obviously they're there to to provide uh, the ability for this uh, bacteria to actually move okay so now we have a distinction between our eukaryotic and our prokaryotic cells but let me remind you this notion of the true nut and before the nut refers very specifically to the fact that eukaryotic cells have their dna enclosed in a membrane bound nucleus and of course our bacterial cells do not now to finish off with I'd like to introduce you to the scale of these these items. So here on this left-hand side, our eukaryotic cell, we're saying that it can be any size ranging from 10 to 100 micrometers. Remember that a micrometer is one one thousandth of a millimeter. So it, certainly to our mind and our eye, of course, a tiny, tiny, tiny distance. So even the biggest of these, which would tend to be plant cells, you're going to get something like 10 to a millimeter, so very, very small structures. Our bacterial cells are way smaller. Okay, in the region of one micrometer. So you could fit 1,000 of them across one millimeter. Okay, so it's quite a mind boggling thought. A couple of other points I really want to sort of address with you, and they're, they're things that are kind of going to be useful for us later on in future studies. With our prokaryotic cells, I want you to realize they have no mitochondria. Now, while we haven't kind of looked at this in detail yet, mitochondria are structures that allow the release of energy through the process of aerobic uh, respiration. Okay, so we don't have any and never have any in any prokaryotic cells. In fact, we can also say they have no membrane, they have no membrane bound organelles at all. Okay, so if we were to, or later on when we look at uh, structures like chlorop chloroplasts, for example, in green plants, we're going to find um, other types of membrane-bound organelles. And finally, with regard to our prokaryotic cells, they also split, or what we might call divide, they split by a process we refer to as binary fission. Now, we are going to study this in a little bit more detail when we do one of our practicals later in the course. But they split by binary fission, which basically means that this cell here is capable of replicating itself and splitting itself in two to produce two daughter cells exactly identical to the mother cell. And we call that binary fission. Now, to finish off with, let's just remind ourselves of some of the key language that we've looked at. A prokaryotic cell or a prokaryote, the before the nut, a bacteria an archaea which contains a DNA loop and plasmid and has a cell wall. A eukaryote, a plant, an animal, a fungi or a protist and it has a membrane bound nucleus. The nucleus contains the genetic information, the DNA, and it controls the activities of the cell. The DNA is the code that controls those activities. The DNA loop is the loop of DNA we find in prokaryotic cells. Plasmids are the rings of DNA found in the same place. The cell membrane is the semi-permeable, semi-permeable, semi-permeable structure which separates the cell from its external environment. Cytoplasm is the cell fluid that suspends different uh, cell structures and organelles. And finally, we have the cell wall, different to animal and plant cell walls, which will, uh, sorry, correct, let me correct myself, different to plant cell walls, which we'll study in the future, but cell walls are a feature of prokaryotic cells.